Hello and welcome to uh, another one of my ZBrush tutorials. My name is Ron. I do a show with Freedom Miles Radio and called Ron's Media Matrix. And of course you can see my web address down at the bottom if you're interested in listening to a radio show. But for today, but for today I'm going to show you how to make a uh, guitar pick in ZBrush. Uh, I've been really digging here how to make other things and I need to watch some uh, some old some tutorials myself so I can branch out and uh, show you guys how to make a few more things. But today I decided I would do this uh, guitar pick uh, tutorial. So anyway, uh, to start with, well, I've already got my documents set up and uh, I have a particular document size I like to use. This is 1800 by 1200 and at 300 dpi that prints out pretty nice on a, uh, you know, consumer uh, printer you might have at home. So I just make it that size. So uh, if you want to print out your work, so this is a good uh, width and height to start with. So anyway, uh, I've been really digging into my ZBrush and finding different ways to do things. So with this guitar pick, I'm going to start with a circle. And I'm going to show you how I come up with this. I went down to the initialization. And I lowered the division to the pos lowest possible count. Uh, let's see, okay. Let me, there we go, now. So what I did is I lowered it down to the lowest possible count. This is normally a circle. You can move it up, but if you move it down to its uh, three divisions, uh, three horizontal divisions and three uh, vertical divisions, you come up with this triangle. And I believe this is the reason for this is because Right down at the core, this particular 2D shape is based on rectangles. So we got a we got a triangle. I mean, uh, based on triangles. So we got a triangle here, and uh, so we're going to initiate the floor to see which direction we're going. Um, what I did here is I went ahead and committed it to a poly mesh, and so now it's in the poly. It's a poly mesh. We probably had the uh, root poly frame, uh, this, uh, which was the circle 3D shape, but now we have a poly mesh of this uh, particular initialized uh, circle I have. So anyway, I went ahead and uh, I divided it up a little bit. Now it doesn't quite look like a guitar part pick yet, but we're not done here. So now we got like a slightly rounded uh, triangular shape to work with. And <clears throat> so this actually, right now, for the uh, for purposes of uh, the theory, uh, this has no thickness. Although we can see the double sided if we go down to the display properties, we can see the other side. So this makes it a little less confusing. But if you look at it edge on, it has no thickness. So what we want to do, we want to give this uh, 2D surface shape some thickness and also you can hit the F key to make it fill up the frame if you like but you can see it has no thickness right now so we're gonna hold our alt key down and back out a little bit and I believe I've uh, demonstrated this technique before we're gonna use the morph target so we've got a poly mesh uh, 3D circle 3D and so we want to give us a thickness so I'm going to use this morph target technique and we're going to store the morph target we go to our deformations. Now, what's unusual about this, you would think that you would only want to inflate this in the Z direction. But because it had, really has no thickness, uh, for some reason you have to inflate it along all three axes to give it thickness. And I'll demonstrate that to you here. You go down to the inflate command, and we're going to inflate it to like uh, 25. Okay, now we've got a, a, a we're going to create a difference in our morph target. So we create a diff uh, difference mesh, and now when we go in here, you see that you have a uh, 25 thickness of 25, but we still have the the uh, centric uh, uh, polyframe construction. So now we our guitar pick has some thickness. And uh, we're going to add some more. Uh, we're going to increase the, uh, the 
the mesh density here. So we're going to divide this up. And I'm going to go real high, and I'm going to show you why here in a minute. We want a fairly uh, mince, uh, dense mesh because we're going to put a stencil on this. We're going to color it, and we're going to we're going to put a, a stencil on this. Uh, something you know it says guitar pick. So anyway, I'm going to go ahead and uh, choose a different material here, the toy plastic, one of my favorites, and this is a plastic object. So we're going to make a uh, what we're going to fill this with a toy plastic material. We turn off our Z ad, go to our MRGB channel, and we're going to start off with a white uh, toy plastic. So we fill our object. Okay. So now what I'll do, I want to paint, I want to give this kind of a groovy looking uh, uh, guitar pick. We're going to give it kind of a tie dye type of color. So uh, we're going to go to our color spray. And you notice we have black and white in here, so we want to pick some uh, different colors. We want to make this, uh, say, make it yellow, perhaps, and then make this uh, red. Uh, now, the color spray tool should put in both these colors. Uh, I think you can, I believe you can modify the stroke here about the way it mixes the color up. But without going to that, we're just going to get it colored. We're going to get it colored. And uh, if you notice here, I got my focal shift to zero, so you don't have that inner center circle. So we're going to put it back to the uh, what's normally the default of uh, minus 50 for our focal shift, or 51 in this case. I'm going to increase the size a little bit. And so we're just going to, uh, you know, my color sprayer tool is not working like, okay. Let's see if there's any modifications there. Okay, uh, maybe we got our, our uh, draw size a little too big. Yeah, okay, so we're just going to kind of color this around. And we're going to switch colors. We're going to uh, add some red. And maybe go back and add a little yellow. And uh, let's throw some blue in there. So we're getting this kind of a uh, psychedelic type uh, coloration scheme here. And we're going to call that good. Okay. Now, uh, we're going to place our stencil on. I have a prepared, uh, a previously prepared stencil I've made. Uh, it just says the words guitar pick on it. So we're going to go into RGB mode. We're going to go up to the alpha, we're going to import, it looks like I've already got there. I've already got it from a previous session. So this is going to be our stencil, it just says guitar pick on it. And uh, so this is our alpha. It's called, just the letters, guitar pick. And we're going to turn it on. Oh, okay, we have to make it a stencil. So we got to go down up to the alpha. Uh, Go to transfer and make it a stencil. Okay. And we have to invert it to apply correctly. If you hold down the space bar, you get the uh, stencil command uh, modifier here. And so we're going to rotate this thing around. Now move it up. Maybe scale it out a little bit. And uh, we want the uh, Stencil, we want the uh, wrap mode so it sticks right to the surface. Now, what I want to do is I want to use some black letters on this. So, we're going to get out of the spray mode temporarily. We're going to pick a different alpha and we're going to spray the word guitar. We're going to go spray through our stencil here and we're going to put the word guitar pick. Now, one of the things I probably talked about this before. But if you notice over here, we've got a pretty high uh, dense mesh. If you go anything any lower, you're going to get some, uh, uh, it's not going to be quite as clear. So I've got it at five. You can go higher if you like. So anyway, we're going to turn off the stencil here. And so we got a guitar pick. Now, if you take notice, it's also stenciled through on the other side. Well, 
one good thing about ZBrush, if you really want to get technical, you can be technical. So we're going to control Z. We're going to take that stencil off. We only want the stencil to be on one side of our guitar pick. So we're going to take a look at our mesh here. We've got a pretty dense mesh. And uh, I believe you've probably seen me use uh, poly groups before. And the shift control where you can uh, define one side or the other. So we're going to move this over. You hold down shift control. And we're going to mask out. We're going to make a poly group. We only want one side of our guitar pick to be stenciled. So we're going to go down to our poly groups. And we're going to declare group visible. That's going to be one side of our pick. All right. So we've got the other poly group hidden. But now we want to put our stencil on. So we go back to our stencil, put it on. The RGB, we want to color it black. And we got the stroke tool to freehand, and we got this uh, really nice sharp alpha. And if you like, you can uh, maybe perhaps fill the screen. Of course, now you're going to have to change your stencil up again. But uh, if you want to get in really close, you're going to have to modify the stencil a little bit. Maybe rotate a little bit too. Uh, right about there. Right there. Now, we're just going to color that in with some black. Maybe I can uh, raise the intensity level a little bit. Make it color a little quicker. So we get this all colored in really nice, like so. And get every get it filled in really good. Now we're going to turn our stencil off. So we still have the other polygroup side hidden. And if you turn on the display properties, you can see that it's kind of hollow back there because that other part is hidden. So we hold down Shift Control, we reveal the other polygroup. We turn off our polyframe mode, and uh, what you got here is you got your guitar pick. It's only stencil on one side, and so that's it for this video. Thanks for viewing, and I hope to be making some <coughs> some more videos in the future. But uh, we'll turn on our perspective, turn off our floor, and we'll render this out. And so there you got your guitar pick. Uh, I believe I could have, if you really want to, to get better detail, you need to go into your geometry. Now, you might want to get this up to about maybe 7, but uh, it gets very dense at that point. But that's uh, fairly good for the uh, guitar pick. So, thank you so much for watching, and I'll be making some more videos in the future. Uh, as soon as I get subscribed to DigitalTutors.com and learn how to do a few more things, well, I'll come back with you and show you how to make more things with ZBrush. So, thanks so much for watching and, uh, you know, uh, have fun out there. Alright, thank you so much.